Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at the Canadian dollar and we're looking at the daily chart of the Canadian dollar right now and it is updated up to October 22nd, which is today at uh, 1 52 p.m. Uh, Central Time. And what I want to do here is I want to demonstrate some real powerful uh, techniques, okay? in isolating when the predominant or major trends on the daily chart are likely to start okay the tops and bottoms now looking on this daily chart here for example you can see that at any given from any given predominant top such as this top here or this top here bottom bottom so forth that within that move of course we have all our minor moves you know here's a swing top in swing bottom okay and then we finally go up to here's another swing top swing bottom okay so you can see there's these minor swings from here's a major bottom on a daily chart that is and then you have a swing top swing bottom swing top swing bottom and here outside bar so top bottom and then top okay you have these little waves within it you know the larger waves and so forth we all know this okay now while we have the F dates the daily turn dates which are just going to be pegging these minor uh, swings that's why you only want to trade the F dates that are going with the trend the trend itself on the daily chart the short-term moves uh, start and stop based on these predominant tops and bottoms this top this bottom this top this bottom, this top, this bottom, this top. And you can see like when we went from this top to this bottom, we even had these larger intermediate waves here. And if I was to plot, you know, for example, the, the three bar uh, swing pattern here, you can see major tops and bottoms. Here we had a corrective one in here. Um, this one only had two bars up, that's why it doesn't look like this. This is three bar swing chart. But anyway, you can see the major tops and bottoms that way. Okay, and let me take that off. All right, I have put Keltner bands on here, <clears throat> which helps you to see that the market is a certain distance away from the mean, which I refer to uh, is the center channel line here, for example. It's uh, a 20 exponential moving average is what it really is. When prices start moving away from it, it'll usually snap back. And you'll notice I have the stochastic, I have the Williams percent R, and I have the MACD. All right. I don't normally have these three indicators on my chart uh, at the same time. I am doing this for your benefit. Okay. Normally I'll have just the MACD. Then I'll probably put on the stochastic just to get extra information then I'll take it off and the percent R I put on on occasion too as well and you'll see why I have it up here right now okay let's get to it again I have put these W dates on here these are the weekly turn dates and I've put it on this daily chart because I want you to see that the significant trend changes on the daily chart usually occur within these weekly turn dates so I have plotted, for example, weekly turn date 823, which was a dollar sign F date, and that was this significant bottom here on 823, uh, just happens to be. Then up here, this major top in, in the, uh, or the last significant top in the Canadian dollar occurred on 919, which was within weekly uh, turn date 920. And then down here, we had the um, uh, bottom, on 1010 which occurred in weekly turn date 104 which was the last one and then now we have weekly turn date and I have it shown here as a 118 but as I just sent out a notice to everybody um, yesterday that uh, this was recalculated to be actually W date 111 let me just correct that there okay so that you can see that now you notice how I staggered them bottom top bottom obviously price is moving up from a bottom I'm expecting the next well, weekly turn which is going to be the next significant top like these 
in the Canadian dollar. I'm expecting that to occur within uh, W date 11.1. Okay, and I've labeled it the top zone. So right now the question is because you see today is 10.22. Is 10.22 within the 11.1 zone? Yes, it is because, for example, uh, 1122 which is today and it's inside of a daily F date that's what those diamonds are there for uh, is within week ending October 25th okay 1025 the weekly bar of 1025 is only one bar early of weekly bar 111 when you look at it on a, a weekly chart and so let me go to the weekly chart and you'll see what I'm talking about here is the W date 10 4 bottom Prices have been rising up, and here's the 11 1 uh, weekly turn date. And you can also see that here's this week, which is October 25th week, and it's just one bar early, okay, from 11 1. So it could make a weekly turn date. So, what I'm the reason I'm bringing that up is because here we have currently this higher high price bar which is in an F date and we have to ask ourselves for every new higher high especially those in an F date could this be the top could this be the top or could this be the top we have to ask ourselves that question so what you want to do is you want to look to see if you know is it at resistance um, and, and it has happened to be resistance now it's not in resistance based on that line because I drew that line based on that high today but for example uh, I go off previous highs like this right here, and you can see that it is definitely at resistance here, 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 okay? So we can see that price does recognize that price level, and so today, price so far has made a high at resistance. So when we see that, we have to ask ourselves, well, could this, could this be the top? Okay, the answer is yes, it could be the top but is the probability high that it's the top I'm going to say no and I'm going to show you why let me put the Keltner back on first okay and now let's start talking about this going back to previous tops because we're looking for a top let's go back to previous tops some of the things that we notice is that um, if you come down here in the stochastic notice that we're in overbought territory and you know we have the crossover look down in the percent R area here and you'll notice that it, we're usually dealing with uh, the indicator being up here in the oversold and then breaking down okay where that would be yeah we're likely forming a top you come down here to the MACD now the MACD in this particular case here you know it's not going to cross down okay right when you make the top okay it's gonna cross down after it's made the top more often but is it in the deep buy area in other words are we deep in the green area here even possibly are we now starting our decline okay so you know if you're at the peak or at a top you'd like to at least be looking at this and saying okay it looks like we're at a top and now we're starting to uh, decline okay go back to a previous top let's do this again okay and by the way you can see it's also in in the uh, uh, over the the overbought area of the Keltner band too which is an, an extra plus here we have another significant top that occurred here again you'll notice hey the stochastic is in the overbought area and, and it soon here will start to cross down you can see this indicator is also in the overbought area, soon to come to cross down. And you can see that we've had long since peaked in this uh, positive area here on the MACD histogram and had already started declining by the time this high came up here. Okay, so these kind of supported it as well. So if you go back, now in this case here, for example, you can see that when we finally came to one bar after that we noticed yes we ended up in the overbought uh, here we already had reached overbought a few bought, uh, bars earlier came out tried to go again and broke down so again we're in the extreme area here and also right here you can see that it would start to decline on the MACD 
and again the same thing here we're in overbought for this significant top the percent R is in the overbought area and it's ready to start coming down and also we're in the decline of this MACD histogram do you see the how these indicators by going to the past we can then kind of get further confirmation of this and um, if we come over to here now and we look at this price bar can we say the same thing does this price bar match the characteristics we've seen for all these previous uh, trend changes major tops in this market and the answer is no sure we're at resistance but look the stochastic is really low it's not in the overbought zone here uh, this is close but it hasn't made it inside the overbought uh, zone either like it had all the previous times okay uh, we already know it hasn't even gone to the top zone of the Keltner so it's acting more so far like this one here that didn't make it to the top but this is a much narrower channel too so you know I gotta gotta give that a little consideration that hey it, at least we should be uh, already at the top of the channel since it's not even that big of a channel but even here we all these three indicators supported that we were topping and this here has yet to support this is the closest one is right here but it has not yet gone in here and look at your MACD it isn't in there as as well I mean we we haven't quite peaked as we did in the past so right now I am very hesitant to call this the top I'm going to suspect that prices will resume higher, break above this resistance, move higher, and perhaps it, it may make that top in this dollar sign F date here, which is October 29th, or somewhere within you know the area. But it's going to be, like I said, we are now looking for that top for uh, W date 11 one. So starting with this bar now, we are now in the zone. Okay for a weekly top we want to keep our eyes on all these indications uh, that will help us see that okay it looks like we're ready to make the top and of course we want to see that it happens in an F date because that's likely where it would happen alright I, I hope that that helps to uh, uh, help you in your determining whether we may or may not be ready for a significant trend change on the daily chart thanks for watching